Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today we're going solar. Hey, welcome back to the channel everyone if this is your first time here it's good to see you and if you're a repeat watcher well welcome back um, as you can see I've got a solar panel sitting on top of this camper that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be putting solar on the camp easy we've been using this camper for about a year now we really enjoy it usually we go to you know state park campgrounds where there's you know a good uh, shore power source but we're not always going to have that. Um, a few episodes ago, we bought a generator that we can use in boondocking situations. Still plan to use that some. But again, you may not always be able to use that. There may be some other campers around. So today, we're going to put in solar. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be self-contained. We're not going to have to grab a generator and gas jugs and take with us. Um, it should be super easy once it's installed. I've got a couple 50 watt Renogy solar panels. I'm going to wire those in series. We'll talk more about why later. I'm going to be feeding that into a 15 amp um, Victron charge controller that has Bluetooth capabilities, which again is going to be super cool. We'll talk more about that later as well. Um, and all that will be feeding into a 100 amp hour AGM battery. So let me show you the battery. So here's the battery I'm going with. This is a Wise brand, uh, 100 amp hour, sealed lead acid, AGM battery. AGM means absorb glass mat. Um, it's a real good battery technology. You can get a lot of life out of it, a lot of use out of it. Um, and it's quite a bit cheaper than some of the more expensive alternatives like lithium. Now don't get me wrong, lithium would be nice and I would go with that. Um, but I just, I don't wanna put that kind of money into it. A lithium 100 amp battery, is it's almost a thousand dollars for a battle born and for a cheap chinese battery it's like seven eight hundred bucks right now 150 sounds great to me now the trade-off a 100 amp hour um uh, agm battery like i'm using you can only pull out some people say 50 percent safely some people say you can pull out like 80 percent of the amperage safely i don't know i'll have to find out more about that a lithium you can pull out 100 percent, so you can use all 100 amps before you recharge but even still, this is a teardrop camper. You know, I'm not running a, a NASA space shuttle off this thing. I've got some LED lights, a vent fan, you know, some minor electronics. I think this is gonna be plenty good enough for me. So the first thing I've done here is I put some masking tape around where the solar panel is gonna set. Cause I need to clean the surface and I'm gonna prep it with a primer or an adhesion promoter for the tape that I'm gonna put this uh, solar panel down with. I'm gonna use 3M VHB tape. I think VHB just stands for very high bond, but it's actually in tape that they even use on uh, aircraft. So it should be you know, plenty good enough for the teardrop. So I've removed the solar panel and here's what the taped outline looks like. Did you come out here to watch us put solar panels on? Hmm? 3M recommends that you clean the surface with a 50-50 mixture of alcohol, isopropyl alcohol and water. So I'm just mixed that up and we'll spray that on here. And then I'll put some of the uh, primer on there to prep the surface for the tape. So again, I'm gonna use double-sided tape. Now this is really super strong tape and I'm gonna be priming the surface. The primer I'm using is called 3M Primer 94. I'm gonna put a very, very thin amount on the back of the panel where the tape will be. I'm gonna do one stripe of tape along each side, one down the middle, and probably not even a whole stripe. It'll probably just be individual pieces because I understand this tape is like incredibly incredibly strong so if i ever have to take the panel off i don't want to have to rip the roof of the camper off to do it so according to the directions i have to let the primer dry thoroughly before i can put the tape down so what do we do around here when we're waiting on something to dry let's go throw a few discs oh that was a close one A 
again I'm just guessing <clears throat> at how much tape to put down I did a little research and of course you read everything on the internet so I'm still guessing but if one inch according to the net will secure 45 pounds of weight then I would think that a five inch strap at each you know three places at each end should be enough we'll see it's going down the road 70 miles an hour let's hope it holds all right you all this is the moment of truth because when this goes down it's down Gotta make sure it's lined up just right. According to the directions, supposed to use 15 pounds of pressure to seat the tape I'm afraid to put too much pressure on this because it is a solar panel I don't want to don't want to harm anything so you may be wondering why I didn't just drill a hole in the roof of the camper underneath each one of these four grommets and install the panel with four screws I mean it is supplied with you know grommets at each corner well, the big reason is I didn't want to put any extra holes in the roof of my camper. Um, I don't have to have solar panels, and therefore I don't have to have those holes in my roof. Um, the tape, as I you know understand, is really strong, not, not only according to the company that makes it, but according to a lot of the reviews I've read. And also, one benefit of the tape is it's got some thickness to it. This is a foam tape. It's probably a sixteenth of an inch thick or close to it. So that means that the, the solar panel is going to have a sixteenth of an inch air gap underneath it. So when this thing gets really hot in the summer, um, as I understand, solar panels can lose performance when they get too hot or maybe even lose some lifespan. There should be a little tiny air gap underneath this thing to allow for some circulation. So that's the plan anyway. So like I said, the tape is supposed to be applied at above 50 degrees, and it was exactly 50 degrees today, but now that they're on, the sun is actually getting kind of low on the horizon. Uh, we're in the shadows, you can see it's cooling off out here. So what I want to do is put the camper in the garage, let it set all night where it's warm, um, let that tape really get a good secure bond before I come back out tomorrow and start routing wires. When I'm going to be pulling wires tomorrow, I'm going to be putting pressure on the panels, and I want the tape to be at its maximum strength. All right, let's talk real quick about the coronavirus. I know this is a camping video, this is a solar installation video, but hey, like it or not, the coronavirus is here. That is the number one reason to go camping in 2020. You're not gonna be in a crowded environment like you would be if you were going to a sporting event or Disney World or something like that. The coronavirus is not gonna tag along behind your trailer and follow you out in the middle of the woods. Um, even if you go to a public campground, like a state park campground, usually there's a pretty good amount of space between sites. So don't be afraid, get out and have a good time this year, but do it with camping. Be safe, say no to coronavirus, say yes to camping. So I just pulled the camper back outside. It's been in the garage where it's warmer all night to give the tape a good time, a good chance to bond to the roof. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna try to pull it off. I'm just gonna give a little bit of a tug. It feels pretty good. So the next step for me now is to route these wires into the vent fan housing. Um, when I built the camper, I ran some 10 gauge wires, braided wires from the tongue box through the body of the camper, and I coiled those up inside of the vent fan housing. Now I just need to drill holes in the vent fan housing and take the wires from the solar panels in there, tie those together, and then we'll go down to the tongue box. So let's get the vent fan apart. So my vent fan has a trim ring around it that's held in with some screws. I'm just gonna pop those loose and take this down. And here you can see one of the two wires 
Um, this actually goes to the fan itself, but there are two wires tucked up in here. You can see one of those right here that I've pulled out. I just need to find the other one. All right, so there are my two wires coming from my solar panel. Just to make the access a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and take the face of the fan off. I'm gonna turn these clips. Pull this off. And then there should be some screws where I can take the face of the fan off. So I know my mom is probably watching this episode. She's watching all this stuff on this uh, quilt that she made me. But mom, I checked and none of this is greasy or dirty. So I'm taking care of your quilt. Using a spade bit on my drill, I just drilled a hole on the back side of the roof vent fan. And that is so I can put, get the camera around here, one of these grommets or one of these, um, entry glands through there i'm just going to stick it through the vent housing and um, use this uh, vice grip wrapped in a towel to protect the roof to hold it in place while i tighten it down from the inside and there it is coming through i just need to tighten it down I'm putting the holes on the back side of the roof vent fan so when I'm going down the road it won't be trying to blow rain and water inside the side the housing. Now I need to cut this connector off of this wire because I'm going to loop it around and stick it in that entry gland. I gotta put the cap on it first. There we go. Now I hit, I feel it hitting something in there, so I need to go inside and bend that downwards. So here's the wire that I pulled on down through there. You can see this is gonna be a nice clean installation. There are a couple rubber components to this, this gland nut, and it will make a watertight seal. And I don't expect to have any problems, but if I did, I could always come back and put some Trim Pro 635 sealant on there, but I don't think it's gonna be anything to worry about. And besides, I have the overhang of this, it acts like an eave. That should be great. I can sure feel the heat coming off these things and it's only 60 degrees today. I'm glad there's an air gap under there. Um, this positive wire is a little short to go in the housing of the fan. So I bought an extension, or they call it an adapter, I guess, off of Amazon. We'll just clip that on there. All right, so now we can route that in there. Now that all the wiring is in, I just need to put on some buck connectors to tie everything together. So I made both connections up, I gave them a good tug, and I put some heat shrink tubing on them. So now, 
we're ready to button this back up and go to the tongue box. So there's not a whole lot to show about putting the fan back together, but it is back together. It's good and clean. All the wiring is routed inside there. Let's go around to the top. The only thing I have left to do on the top now is to join the panels together. And that's simply just plugging the wires together, but I'm not gonna do that yet because right now it's a broken circuit and that means there's no electric flowing down to the tongue box. And I don't want there to be until the tongue box is made up. 